How's it going everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project, Jim here. And today I got something amazing for you guys. We're here with Karen and Bob. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's Bob, I'm Karen. <laughs> this is Abby. Now if you haven't seen these two yet, I'm gonna link a video down below where they give a tour of their entire property. Go definitely go check that out. But we're here today to talk because these are local experts who've got their hands dirty. <laughs> Natural and sustainable building techniques. <laughs> More like your whole body dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what, what kind of techniques have you utilized out here? Well, when we we were gonna move out here, we weren't exactly sure what we were gonna build out of because we weren't sure about what our soil was like. We had seen cob building in a different area and we were real interested in that, but we didn't know if our earth would be correct for it because it's gotta have the right clay percentage and everything. So we just basically experimented with our dirt. When we bought our land, there was just nothing here and we came out and uh, took some dirt samples and tried to do the jar test where you put it in water and watch it all, but we didn't get too much info off of that or we weren't doing it right or something. So we decided the better way was to just make a little form, make some little bricks out of different combinations of our dirt and sand and, and whatever. And then when they hardened up, we tried to bust them up and see which ones were the toughest basically. So we ended up doing cob here. We had considered maybe doing an earth bag if our dirt wasn't right, but it was. So that's how we decided to do cob. Not knowing how long it was gonna take to do, uh, we introduced some other techniques in there. Uh, for example, our north wall is just a solid wall with no windows. And we figured that might take us the rest of our lives to do it in <laughs> If we so, did it in cob. So we decided to do straw bale on that back wall. And, and so the back wall is straw bale and the other three walls up to about eight feet high are cob. And then above that on the sides and in the front is a light clay straw, which is just more of a straw mix with a waterier mud in it and it kind of packed into forms and, and then you know it dries you pull it off and the plaster it. So, so that's basically it's just a combination of some different techniques. And, and part of the usage of cob was also because we were on a pretty uh, tight budget and straw bale probably would have gone up quicker and it would be a little bit more insulating. That probably would be the first choice if we ever built again, which we won't do. But, <laughs> but uh, and cob was readily available here. The, the soil was perfect for it. And that really made a big difference in our, in our decision. And we worked with some different bottle walls and things like that. One thing we did was make sure that, um, well, what I would recommend before anyone even builds anything or sites their house would be to, get a good book on passive solar design because this area that we live in here is a, like part of the year it's a little bit cold and then a lot of the year it's like really hot so your relationship to the sun changes as you go through the year so if you if you point yourself to the south or what we did was cocked a little bit slightly to the east then in the winter you get a low sun coming across like this and you can kind of be in it. Whereas the summer comes up way back like to the northeast and then rises to way overhead and then sets to like the northwest. So. so when it's really cold in the morning, our upper windows above the porch here, we have sun streaming in and you can sit on the couch or sit at the kitchen table and it's nice and warm. And we lived in a travel trailer before we built and we positioned the travel trailer facing south and without an awning, we moved, we moved on in on June 1st, it was 106 degrees. And by four o'clock in the afternoon, the way the sun traveled in the summertime, we were sitting in the shade in front of our trailer in our lawn chairs comfortably with no awning at all needed. So it's, it's really important and it's, it's, if you're looking to uh, minimize your heating and cooling costs, it's, it is a valid point. Some people will plant a pole and then look where the shadow is and mark it with rocks for the different time of year. But, you know, it's gonna take you a whole year. 
So you can get these charts that will just tell you like for your latitude or longitude, and, you know, your position, like where the sun comes up at what time of year and how high it goes and that type of thing. Those are things to really put into your design, you know, for your positioning and stuff. A good example of that is the Earth ships with the big glass in the front to the south. Yeah, they get the greenhouses. And they have the, the greenhouses on the front. They they really utilize it probably the best of any construction mode that I'm familiar with. So, so definitely no matter what you're looking to build with, think about positioning. Absolutely. First. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> it's a very, very simple, simple tool and it can it can minimize the, the cost of your heating and cooling a lot. Right, you know, you don't want to face west because, I mean, you're going to be baked out in the summertime with the sun coming right in on you know, low, you know, so things like that. You talked about building both with cob and with a straw bale. Going back, you think you would probably just do straw bale? If it was... If you could afford it, it, it's, yeah, it was, it's a lot less... It's pricey. It's pricey. It's, it's easier. Pricey. And it's it's very it goes much up real quicker. quick. <laughs> very like that much back quicker. wall went up in like one or two days. One or two days. It's the only hard part was like cutting the very top ones to you know yeah. to fit in, but you just kind of stack them like bricks, and there you go. You know? And then you just make your earth and mud plaster. I don't and know what bales are now. The last ones I bought, which was Eight probably two <laughs> three years ago, or when I was doing the man cave, was yeah. probably eight eight and a half bucks a bale. Yeah. And, and it can add up because you want to have, if you use straw bale, you want to be sure that it's barn stored, that it has not been stored outside because you don't want to get any fungus or mold or anything that would start something growing. Um, and there's not a lot of places that do that. A lot of places out here um, stack them underneath a awning, but it's open to being blown on by rain and stuff like that. The seasons where you build too is kind of, it can help you out to, like we started, we broke ground here in October, like right when the rains were ending, and then we started in, the weather's getting cool. We did our foundation and a, like a stem wall of the cinder blocks, and then after that we built the roof. So that by the time you know we got all that done, it was getting hot again in summer. So then we would have shade to work in, and then we just built the walls up to the roof. Choosing your season is really important because if you just plaster a wall and you're so happy with it, yeah, the rainy just, season kind of screws yeah. up your plaster. Because and... usually here in southeast Arizona, you get big wind first, and then you get the rain. So if you tarp things, the tarp is ripped yeah, the wind off, comes and, and blows your tarps off, and then the rain rains. The rain <laughs> destroys everything you've done. We woke up to the back wall. Um, one morning, it was just an unseasonal rain, I think it was in December or something, and uh, it just, there was nothing left, <laughs> it was down to the, uh, it was just heartbreaking. I opened the trailer window and just screamed, oh. So, yeah, it, it does make a difference if you can time your, the, the projects you do with the right season to do them. In contrast, the cob was a lot cheaper. Oh, the cob was free. <laughs> it was, <laughs> well, we hired a guy with the backhoe yeah. to, to go buy one of our washes and get a big pile of dirt, put one over there, and then we built that side. And then we got another one pile over here, and we built this side. But how long did it take? Well, from one from around the back where where it hooked up to the the straw bale wall around to this side of the. Uh, sliding glass door was 20 days and remember that only comes up to under as far as you can see here and then the other one took about 22 days because we were working with the bottle wall there so setting the bottles took a little longer you had to kind of work work it in and so it, it did take more time but it was about 20 days for that side and about 23 for this. The whole house took we started in October of 2010 and we were finished and moved in by June 2012. Yeah, about a year, you know, nine a year, months, something, nine like months that. something like that. And he and I did it by ourselves. So, you know, if you had more family members or, or other people, it could probably go quicker too. It was easy. We, we just, it wasn't easy. It was workable for us because Bob was like, the one up on the ladder and I was the grunt on the ground. <laughs> so like I could keep mix going for him and then 
bucket it up to him and he could, you know, do the part that I couldn't reach. But the more the merrier. I mean, the more the more people you have working on it, of course, the faster it goes. So. And you've been living in this in this house now for almost a I guess, almost a decade. Uh, right? Well, how many? Twenty twelve, we moved in, mm -hmm. so. So we're six years, about six and a half years, yeah. that we've been actually living in it. Yeah. And how's it been like? It's been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I mean, you know, we with the thermal mass, of course, that that offers it. You know, if you if it gets if it's warm in there, it stays warm. We have a wood stove in there, which is our only source of heat. Yeah. So I mean, we can get it. We can get it up to eighty in there if we want on the coldest day. How thick are the cobbles? Um, the, at the base, on top of the cinder blocks, it starts out 16 inches, and then it tapers to 12 at the top. Yeah, at the top of this section here, and uh, the tapers on the outside, so the inside walls are straight level. And of course, Arizona, very well known for its heat. We don't have anything really except uh, ceiling fans ceiling in here. Fans. You know, it stays pretty good. It could be like a hundred out, and it'll be like. Yeah, this year at about 106, 107, which was I think our top temperature this year, it was about 84. So it's, and you can always use a swamp cooler yeah, if I mean, you want to. I mean, we, we just choose not to, just, they are, they work great, and you could stick one in a window and it would, you know. Plus we have a, you know, more down. of a minimal electrical system, so we have, we try to keep our electric usage kind of down. But uh, mid '80s isn't isn't bad. <laughs> no, it's a, it's fine for us. I mean, you know, maybe after a few like you know, weeks of it just being a hundred, it might get a little bit hotter in there. So we have kind of a technique, at least in the dry part of the summer, where like all night we'll open everything up, all the windows, and just let it cool off. And then in the morning when the sun comes up, you know, we have one of those indoor outdoor thermometers. And when it starts getting hotter outside than inside, then we'll close everything up, and then it actually keeps it cooler in there. And it's it's recognizably cooler. I mean, if you're outside and then you go in, it's like, oh, yeah. it's pretty Now, nice. when it gets in the more humid time and it's hotter later, that doesn't work so well. We just leave everything. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's not unbearable by any means. And, and like I said, for, for people who are a little more sensitive to heat, um, you could get a block cooler. It's inexpensive. Yeah, I know people get the, the those well. mini splits now and they're a lot more efficient. But we'd probably have to have more of a system to be working. But yeah, we try to keep it simple. You know? That's that's another uh, another really big tip that we have seen from a lot of people that have called us and talked to us. When people start out, start up as small as you possibly can with the intention that you could always add on because it's it's a great accomplishment to finish something and be able to actually move into it and live in it and use it and instead of having this big monstrous rambling thing that is half done and you're living in a little part of it while you're working. <laughs> and we've known several people that have done that and actually abandoned their project and said, screw it, we just can't do this, it's too hard. So if you keep it small and keep it simple, start out with your minimal needs and then you can build as you get experience with the building you know how you how you build and how you work as a team building and and you know you can always add you can always put out more buildings but if you actually finish something it's just like whew, that's great <laughs> it's, it's think, really rewarding i think that makes a lot of sense uh start small start with something that you can finish that you can do it's doable that you can finish both financially yeah. and just it's it's hard work. It's it's a lot of hard work, and so especially when you get old like we are. Because <laughs> I I was I think I was 57 when we started, so you know you know spring chickens here. <laughs> Bob was younger, but still it's it's a lot of hard physical labor. For sure, uh, earth earthen building is definitely yeah it's heavy. One of the most labor intensive, but it has an amazing accomplishment that you've done. Oh, thank you. Now one of the horror stories, and you mentioned it a little bit with uh, working with straw bale, is the fact that you can get mold, um, sometimes pests and stuff like that can get in there. Um, 
Uh, have you guys had any issues with not any of that? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. The things are to keep it up off the ground, like we, you know, we have our stem wall, and we just put it on there, keep it up, and make sure it's sealed. There's no like open areas in there. But well, Arizona, it's pretty dry, so it's pretty easy to keep. Them yeah. If you start dry, out with clean bales clean bales that aren't contaminated with anything and you're conscientious about getting them up and getting it, you know, doing it at the right time of year, that makes a big difference. And getting them completed, then you're pretty safe. And then once you get that further and plaster over it, you know, Yeah, we did a the, uh, mud plaster just over the whole thing at first, the bales, and then from there we did our final plaster. But I think we did like a couple mud plaster layers over yeah. it. Just to smooth it out and, yeah, make and kind it. of pack the seams and everything. Yeah. And then the the last plaster had lime was lime and sand, so that's waterproofing it. So no, we haven't had any any knock on wood bad issues with that. <laughs> no, it's been good. If if you were to build with total straw bale, probably a good idea would be to have overhangs all the way around the house. We have a very simple shed roof, just a, a sloping roof forward. Um, but if you were to build, we, we know a lady in town that has a, a straw bale and she has like overhang all the way around and that really protects your walls and yeah. that's the preferred kind of a way to do it. porch all the way around where you can always be out of the sun at, on one side or another. This garden, we put it too close to the house so in the winter, it doesn't, yeah, the winter doesn't get enough sun. Sits. But this is far enough, far enough back so it gets sun. We, this is like about the 10th iteration of this garden back yeah. here. So we had like just these on the ground without this structure and the, the mice and the, the rabbits, rabbits and the everything else. Looks like it's doing real well then. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. This is just part one of our talk with Bob and Karen. They had a lot of information to say and I didn't want this video to get a little too bulky so I split it up into a couple of parts. So stick around, we'll be releasing part two very soon. A lot of good information. Definitely stick around and check that out. All right, bye everyone.